Input remappers are incredibly powerful tools that allow us to play games the way that we want, instead of relying on the options provided by each game. They are especially useful for people like me, who play almost every game that requires aiming with a feature called Gyro Aim. Using an input remapper like Steam or Rewast, I can set the motion sensors present on most modern controllers to emulate a mouse, giving me most of the advantages of a mouse on a controller. Seriously, some crazy good people play like this. Like iHeartScope, Misery, But which input remapper is better? Steam Input or Rewast? Not only for aiming, but in general. Let's find out! This video will be a bit more technical than my other videos, so if you have any questions, please leave a comment. I will compare what they have in common, what exclusive features they have, and how they work. I won't have time to explore every little setting and feature, but I hope to give you a good feel of which option is right for you. But first, a word from our sponsor. You! It takes a lot of time and effort to make these videos, so please consider clicking on the super thanks button down below. And now, back to the video. First, you will notice that Rewas is a subscription service, and Steam is free. I think this fact alone will settle the discussion for many people, but both options are incredibly competent, so I believe the paywall is absolutely worth it. That said, Rewas did provide me with a one-year license so I could make this video. So how do these programs work? Steam Input works by translating whatever input you have to an Xbox 360 controller. That way, the game will recognize whatever controller you're using. One of the downsides is that controllers with exclusive features like the DualSense Adaptive Triggers or Gyro will only work if you manually disable Steam Input. But if you do that, you will lose the ability to use Steam Input to remap your controller. Rewas gives you so many options, it's a little absurd. You can do the same thing that Steam does and emulate an Xbox controller. But you can also emulate a DualShock 4, a DualShock 3, a Switch Pro controller, or not emulate anything and use the native inputs of your physical controller. This is useful for multiple reasons. For example, most PC games with native gyro implementations only work with PlayStation controllers. But now I can use Rewas to translate my Switch Pro controller to a DualShock 4, allowing me to use the native gyro features of games that should only work with the DualShock 4. Another cool thing that Rewas does is emulate keyboard and mouse. Some games like Valorant will search your device manager to find the devices that are physically connected to your PC. But even though Steam allows you to emulate keyboard and mouse inputs, it's just a virtual, emulated keyboard and mouse. This won't show up as new devices on your PC. Rewas allows your controller to virtually control your physical keyboard and mouse, thus bypassing the limitation. This is a very specific problem that mainly affects Riot games. But still, they are very popular and I'm sure many people will like this feature. On Steam, Steam input features are very well integrated with Steam itself. In the middle of the game, you can press the home button in your controller and go to the controller configuration screen. Here you have quick access to some settings. But the real deal is behind the edit layout button. Here you can remap every button, bind them to different controller buttons, keyboard and mouse keys, or specific actions related to the remapping options. If the game has native Steam API implementation, you can even rebind actions instead of buttons, which will even change the button prompts in the game. On Rewas, you can essentially do the same thing, minus the Steam API implementation. Every binding is activated in a certain way. Both Steam and Rewas allow us to change how these bindings will be activated. These are called activators. You can choose between regular presses, double taps, long presses, and so on. The difference is how easy it is to add subcommands. Subcommands are actions bound to the same activator. On Steam, you can just add a subcommand like this. So one button can now do two things. But on Rewast, you need to use the combo feature. And it's immediately apparent that this is a macro builder. For what it is, it seems like a very competent macro builder. But man, I just want one button to do two things. You don't have to scare me with a trillion options every time I want to do that. You can use subcommands on Steam to build macros as well, but it's clear that you are not incentivized to do this. Now, I will be honest here, I'm not a dead zone nut or an acceleration nut. I don't know much about them, and I often do not change them because I just rely so much on gyro amp or flick stick that I don't have to worry too much about them. Still, Dead zones and acceleration curves are important for controller players to have a good range of motion, speed and precision. That said, Steam has very standard settings for dead zones, while Rewas has a bunch of options. 
the main one being an editable acceleration curve. Steam is promising an acceleration curve soon, but I don't know if it will be just for Gyro or for both Gyro and Sticks. One thing that caught my attention is that Steam has this feature called on flick command. So when your analog stick passes this threshold, the bound button is pressed. Rewas has the same feature. Times 3. You can set up 3 zones of your analog stick to press 3 different buttons depending on which zone you're in. And the same logic applies to the triggers. I don't know why someone would use so many of these kinds of buttons, but still, this is awesome. Anyway, speaking of gyro, gyro aiming on Steam follows all of the conventions of modern implementations, such as COD and Fortnite. There is no remapper with better gyro features, and that's thanks to this slider. For you to understand the importance of this value, I first need to explain what is Flickstick and what is the natural sensitivity scale. Flickstick allows you to flick the camera in the direction that you pointed with the right analog stick, or to sweep smoothly if you put the analog forward first. Natural sensitivity scale tells you how much you turn in the game compared to real life. If set to 1x, 1 degree in real life will move 1 degree in game. If set to 2, 1 degree in real life will move 2 in game, and so on. 1 to 1 might not give you enough range, so your preference for the ratio will probably be much higher. The pixel per 360 value allows us to properly calibrate gyro and flick stick, so we will have total control over these features. Unfortunately, Rewas is far behind in the gyro department. For starters, the sensitivity sliders are all arbitrary, there are no way to calibrate them. Not even Flickstick has a precise calibration slider, making this feature almost useless because it's so hard to calibrate with arbitrary numbers. The second problem is the lack of different gyro orientations. I already made a video explaining just that, but basically players hold their controllers in different ways. The most common gyro orientation is local space. The problem with that is that if you're holding the controller flat on your lap, for most people, it makes more sense to move the controller like this. This is called yaw mode. But if you hold the controller upwards, it makes more sense to move it like this. This is called row mode. But you must manually choose which position you want to play with before you even start playing. The default gyro orientation is set to row, and the option to change that is hidden in the settings menu of the program, not on the normal gyro settings. If player space orientation was available, we would not have to worry about any of this stuff, because player space already deals with all of these shortcomings automatically. Just pick the controller and go. Still, Gyro Rewas is smooth and clean. It even has some really helpful acceleration features. But Steam allows you to choose different gyro orientations, use momentum, and a bunch of other stuff. If you want to learn more, check my simplified guide. Now, don't get me wrong. Gyro Rewas isn't bad at all, especially if you make use of some controller exclusive features. Do you know the DualSense Edge, the official PlayStation controller that costs $200? Yeah, one of the selling points of that controller is the fact that you can lock the travel distance of your analog trigger. But guess what? The default DualSense can already do that. You just weren't given the option to. This is very cool, because one of the reasons why Gyro can feel wobbly and a bit unstable is because of these huge travel distances. That's why a bunch of players swap the fire button between R2 and R1. With Rewas, you can set the adaptive triggers of your DualSense to do whatever. I really wish Steam had this feature. Alright, I need to address a little controversy that surrounds Rewas. Rewas was never meant to be a cheating tool, the same way that Steam isn't. But a couple months ago, Rewas was banned from Apex and COD. And in some instances, you can't even open the game if Rewas is installed. But why did this happen? Because Rewas allows you to combine different input devices, and even allows you to remap your keyboard. That means that ill-intentioned people were using Rewas to add aim assist to keyboard and mouse. However, these features were meant to be used as an accessibility option, not as a cheating program. And now, players with disabilities lost one of the few ways to play their favorite games. So what's the conclusion? Which remapper is better? Well, it depends. Steam and Rewas have a huge list of compatible controllers, though I feel like Rewas takes better advantage of exclusive features of some of them, like back pedals, adaptive triggers, touchpads, and so on. I will personally stick with Steam because it's the most popular option and because it's easier to share my configurations that way. That and I really like playing things with Flipstick and I don't want to waste my time calibrating things with numbers that don't mean anything. But if I want to play a game with native gyro implementation on PC, 
I will use Rewast because I can use the exclusive features of the controller and remap them at the same time. In the end, it will depend on what you value most. The way I see it, Steam serves a more general public, and anyone can benefit from using it, while Rewast is a bit more niche, with very advanced features for the real nerds and hardcore gamers. Now, which one will you choose, and for what game? Comment down below! Don't forget to like, share and subscribe, and please consider donating to the channel. Thanks for watching.